love Utah. This is amazing. Because here's the thing. My whole comedy act is about food, family, fun, celebrate the little things. And I'm going to, I never know how it's going to go. Like, it usually goes pretty good. But when I'm back in Los Angeles and I'm on stage talking about my family, they have no idea what I mean. <laughs> they have no idea. They're just like, famala? I'm like, no, my family. And they're like, fa, fa, famla? They're staring at me like Eleven from Stranger Things. Like, what is famala? I'm like, you don't know what family is? Like, how do you tell, like, how do you describe a family? I was like, okay. A family is like a group of people that love each other more than they love themselves. And in LA, they're like, that's impossible. Uh, I drive a Tesla, so. <laughs> yes, I like this crowd. Because I think that's the biggest problem with the world right now is that people have just gotten so selfish. They don't care about anybody anymore. And I know that I've never felt the world this miserable before. And I, I don't think the biggest problem is the economy or, or politics or, or even the pandemic. I think the biggest problem right now is that we've forgotten that we belong to each other. And that's the truth. We have to be a little bit nicer, a little bit kinder. And if you don't like how you feel, try do something nice for somebody else. If you want to feel good, you got to do good. All right, this side of the room. something for somebody, if you just see something good happen for somebody else, it makes you feel good. It does. Like, okay, I feel like you guys are judging me. I'll give you a real life example, okay? <laughs> this happened about five years ago when I was at LAX, okay? Now, first off, I want to say that I feel very blessed that I get to do this for a living. I can't believe that I get to be a comedian. It's the best. It's, it really is. It's so fun. It took forever to get good at it. <laughs> Like, when I moved to Los Angeles, my whole family was so supportive for, like, the first two years. They're like, you could do it. And then, like, five years after that, they're like, you're still trying? All right. Like, <laughs> so the simple fact that I get to do this and, like, it's amazing. But the truth is, like, after a while, I just don't like the travel, okay? Like... Going to the airport for me is kind of like, I don't know if you've ever taken your dog to the vet and at first they're all happy just to be in the car. They're like, this is awesome. <laughs> then they start to recognize stuff and they're like, wait a second, I know where we're going. Let me out, let me out, let me out right now. I thought you loved me, I thought you. That's how I feel about the airport, okay? <laughs> so about five years ago, I had the first flight out of LAX. And I don't know if you've ever had the first flight out, but it's a weird feeling. Because I had to set my alarm for like 3.30 in the morning. That's weird. <laughs> it's because like you set your alarm and then it just goes off. <laughs> You're like, did I even sleep last night? I think it still is last night. <laughs> so normally when I have to wake up that early, I buy donuts and I put them all the way in the kitchen. And I'll be like, I don't want to, ooh, I have donuts. And I'll get out of bed. <laughs> Like, I have to train myself like a schnauzer. Like, who's a good boy? Stevie's a good boy. He deserves a treat. He woke up like a grown-up. He gets sprinkles. <laughs> so, I didn't have donuts that morning. And I was just laying in bed like, I'm not gonna go. I don't care. I don't want to. And then I started thinking about how blocky I am to get to do this. As, as I was driving to the airport, I went, oh, I could get McDonald's breakfast. And that put joy into my little body. I was like, yes, I'm going to get extra hash brown. It's going to be awesome. I was so happy walking through TSA that I was like, you have a good morning. And they were like, keep your eyes on the chippy guy in the sweater. He is too happy. And I was so happy I get to McDonald's. And I was like, hello, may I please have a number two with the extra hash brown? And the lady was like, I'm sorry, honey. We're not open yet. And I was like... I could smell McDonald's, but I don't get to eat it. Yeah. And she felt so bad. She was like, can I just have, how about a free cup of coffee? Just take it. It's free. We have coffee. And I was like, no, thank you. Cause I don't even want to be awake right now. 
I just want to fall asleep on the plane and be like, oh, I guess I woke up in Chicago. <laughs> so I go to my gate and it was so early. It was like five o'clock in the morning. It was so early, nobody was even on their phone yet. That's early, right? Like everybody was just sitting there like trying to stay awake. They look like little kids staying awake for Santa, like, like this, right? <laughs> And out of the corner of my eye, I just felt like a presence. And this guy was just moving with the confidence of a winner. Like, you ever just see somebody and you could tell they're like, their lives are way better than yours? Like, he was walking with this confident strut. You know, like, this guy didn't need donuts to get out of bed in the morning. He probably had like a kettlebell and green juice. He was like, I'm up earlier than Jocko. Yes, like, you could just do people. Thank you for getting that reference. All right. Like, every, like, I could tell just by this guy's bone structure, he knew the difference between a bond and an annuity. You know those people? <laughs> like, he was wearing a suit at 5 a.m. Like, he was dressed like a real grown-up. Like, if you told a six-year-old to draw a grown-up, that's what this guy looked like. He looked like Steve Martin from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. He was wearing a suit, he had an overcoat, and he had his wheelie bag, and he just had that confidence. Like, you ever just see somebody like, that guy's never thought about suicide? You know those people that are like, like a winner, this guy was like a winner. So I see him moving like this, and as he's getting closer to me, his eyes start to squint, and he starts looking from this direction. And so I look in that direction, and then I saw somebody that I just related to. This guy was chubby, he was wearing sweatpants that I could tell he slept in. I could tell he did, because game recognized game. I could tell he was like, one less decision tomorrow, right? Here's the best part, he was eating Cheetos at 5 a.m. Yes. And they weren't even a little bag of Cheetos they sell at the airport. It was like the big Costco bag of Cheetos. Which means, which means he put them through the security belt, like they're gonna be delicious on the other side. They're gonna be delicious, okay. The guy was awesome. So I see him eating the Cheetos, and he's just like this, and then the guy that's the winner starts looking at him, and he goes, Scooter? And the guy went, Larry! And they had been, they were best friends. They didn't see each other for 30 years. And they caught up right there in the airport. It was like an episode of This Is Us. It was amazing. It just made us feel good. All right, thank you. All right, you monsters, I have a better example. Okay. So here I was. I was in a coffee shop in Hollywood, California, okay? The most, it's the saddest place on earth, okay? Never go there. This coffee shop was like the first place I ever saw somebody take a selfie, like 10 years ago. I mean, you remember how odd that was where you saw people taking pictures of themselves? I remember I saw these girls and they were taking pictures of themselves. I'm like, I could take it for you. And they're like, no, you'll mess it up. I'm like, sorry. I was just trying to be nice. So I was in this coffee shop and nobody was paying attention to each other. Everybody was in their own little bubble. Like they all had headphones on, they're taking pictures of themselves, they're writing movies, they're, nobody's interacting with anybody until this kid barges into the coffee shop. And when I say he barged into the coffee shop, I mean he had the energy of Doc Brown from Back to the Future, like, Marty, it's your parents, like crazy. And, like he came in and he was like, did anybody hand in a laptop computer? And we're all like, what does he want? This guy's crazy. And the barista goes, slow down, man, what's the problem? The kid goes, D did anybody hand in a laptop computer? And now we're all paying attention, like hand in a laptop computer. And he goes, I left my brand new MacBook Pro on that table right now. It's a big silver computer, I left it on that table right there. And the barista said, why did you do that? And now we're all like, yeah, why did you do that? <laughs> and the kid said, I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> He wasn't crying. He was trying not to cry. <laughs> That's a big difference. Because like, I grew up with brothers, okay? If I see somebody cry, like I'll, I'll, I'll ask them if they're okay, but it doesn't get me, you know? It doesn't get me. But if I see somebody trying not to cry, then I'm gonna try not to cry. <laughs> right? like, he was like, I didn't leave it on purpose. <laughs> And I was like, then why did you leave me? <laughs> so 
So the kid was like, I was sitting right there and my phone rang and it was my mom. And everybody's nodding along like, I love my mom. <laughs> and she was like, hey babe, how's it going? And he was like, it's going pretty good. She was like, I can hear it in your voice. How's it really going? Mom, it's terrible. I've been here for three months. I don't have any friends. Now there was a guy sitting at this table who's nodding along. He's like, I've been here for seven years. I don't have any friends. <laughs> and the kid was like, I started to talk to my mom and I didn't want to be rude, so I walked outside. And as I was talking to my mom, I just started to talk and walk. And before you knew it, I was walking home and I was in my apartment. And she was like, hey, babe, just remember the Lord wouldn't carry you this far just to drop you. And I was like, you're right, mom. You always make me feel better. And she was like, all right, sweetie, angels, blessings. And he's like, then I hung up the phone on my mom. I'm like, everything's going to be OK. And then I went, oh, my goodness, I left my laptop at the coffee shop and I ran all the way back. Did anybody hand it in? Now the poor priest is like, oh, why did you do that? And we're all like, yeah, why did you do that, you know? We're all like, that laptop's gone. And the, and, the, and the priest is like, where did you move from? You have to be more careful. And the kid's like, I moved here from Indiana. And everybody's like, it is not Indiana. <laughs> So now there's a guy at the table who just, he looks at me and he goes like, hey man, how much money do you have? And I'm like, that's the most LA question I've ever been asked, right? He goes, hey man, how much money do you have? I'm like, what? He goes, I have $300, let's chip in and buy this kid a laptop. And I'm like, oh, I have seven, right? Because it's the thought, it's the thought. So now we're all chipping in, we're putting in money for this kid, right? We're like, we'll buy him a new computer. I'm like, that's such a good idea. So the kid's talking to the priest and he goes, I guess nobody handed anything in. He goes, I'll check the lost and found, but only one computer's been handed in and it was this one. And we're all like, move that bus. It was incredible, it was incredible. Joy was going through. And we were all like, we had a pile of money. We we're like, should we just throw a party for being alive? We should throw a party just for being alive, guys. Like, I think the saddest thing about being a grown-up is that you don't realize that you get to do all the stuff you wanted to do when you were a little kid, right? Like, everybody's so miserable because they don't count their blessings. <laughs> Right? Like, we get to eat whatever we want to eat whenever we want to. <laughs> like, tomorrow morning, you guys could just have ice cream for breakfast. <laughs> All right, don't judge me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up my heart again, okay? <laughs> ice cream for breakfast. Think back to when you were a kid. This, okay, I grew up in the 1980s. It was a much simpler time, right? Before Ben met Jerry, ice cream wasn't that sophisticated. <laughs> you essentially had three flavors. You had chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. That's it. If you went to somebody's house and they had mint chocolate chip ice cream, the green kind, you're like, whoa, these people must be rich. Are you guys gonna get a pool next year or maybe an elevator, right? Like, And the mint chocolate chip ice cream had to be green. It had to be. Because sometimes they would try to chip you off and it would say mint chocolate chip ice cream, you open it up and it was white. I remember that one time, my little brother's like, oh, this is disgusting. And my mom's like, there's nothing wrong with it. And he was like, give it to dad. I know dad will eat it. <laughs> Here's the thing, I'm the middle of three boys, okay? Food in my house growing up was a valuable commodity. You had to learn how to eat fast or there wasn't going to be enough. So in my house, it was rules of the jungle. The older you were, the fatter you were. It was that simple because <laughs> you could eat fast. Like my dad was fat. My big brother was fat. I was chubby. My poor little brother, Marky, was so skinny that when he got excited, you could actually see his heart beat in his chest. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, that's awesome. So I remember it was like, it has to be the green mint chocolate chip ice cream. And we'd always try. And like, you would go to the store, no mint chocolate chip. The one time we buy it, it was white. And then I remember this, fateful hot summer night, somewhere in the early 1980s. And I remember my dad just looked at me and my brothers. He was like, hey buddies, do you feel lucky? We're like, what do you mean? He goes, let's go to the store. Let's see if they have the green kind. We're like, let's do it. 
they have mint chocolate chip. The outside of the box is green. Everything's going well. We're like, there's a chance it could really be the green, delicious kind. We take it home, and me and my brothers are around this half gallon of ice cream like it was the briefcase from Pulp Fiction. You know, like, what's in there? And my fat big brother's using all of his fat kid strength to crank it open like with a chisel, like we're breaking into a safe, like, boo, boo. And he finally opens it up. We get blinded by green. There's Christmas level joy in our house. We're like, everybody's eating ice cream. And I remember my little brother was like, Mom, may I please have a second bowl? She was like, okay, Marky. And then I was like, Mom, may I please have a second bowl? And she was like, sweetie, you don't need a second bowl. And I was like, son of a fish, where's the justice? <laughs> and when I was seven, I really thought the expression was son of a fish. I did. <laughs> Because my dad would say it watching football. He'd be like, son of a fish, hit somebody. And I'm like, yes, yeah, son of a fish. And he was like, that's right, buddy. <laughs> I, <laughs> I remember when I was nine years old, my friend Chris heard me say son of a fish. And he was like, what did you say to me? He was like, what did you say? I'm like, you heard me. Son of a fish. And he was like, you know, that's not the expression. I'm like, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> and he tried to tell me what he thought it meant. And I was like, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> and he was like, how does son of a fish make sense? And I go, it's a papa fish swimming, and his son is not swimming fast enough. And he's like, son of a fish, pick up the pace. <laughs> that's, that's what I thought. <laughs> So that night, I couldn't get to sleep because there's this delicious green mint chocolate chip ice cream. There's still probably about two good bowls left in that half gallon. And I can't get to sleep that night because I knew something delicious wasn't gonna last. Marky already had a second bowl. Chris, you always had to watch out for. But the person I was really concerned about was my dad because he didn't have a bedtime. He would strike in the middle of the night like a thief. We would hear him, I'm like, are we getting robbed? And my little brother's like, son of a fish, I think that's dad. And he'd go downstairs and he'd go, no, no, get mom, get mom. And my mom's like, Marky, what happened? He's like, okay, mom, remember how you got me Cool Ranch Doritos? Because I don't like anything else. And you said, okay, Marky, these will be your special treat. Well, guess what? Dad was eating my special treat right in front of me. I caught him. And I said, but dad, mom got me those Cool Ranch Doritos. And he just kept on crunching them and crunching them. And I said, dad, look at the bag. She even left a note. It says, please do not eat Marky's with a smiley face. And then he said, don't worry, buddy. I'll get more. And I know that's a lie because dad never goes shopping. <laughs> so I'm just saying I didn't want that to happen <laughs> to the delicious ice cream. So I remember before I fell asleep, I went, oh, ice cream for breakfast. I'm a genius. Now the next morning, I was the first kid awake in my house. Normally, I was always the last kid awake. But there's ice cream on the line. I had to get in there before my brothers. And my mom was shocked. She had her back turned. And she was like, is that who I think it is? And she turns around, she goes, good morning, sweetie. And I'm like, it is a good morning. <laughs> How about a little ice cream for breakfast? And she went, ugh, that's disgusting. And I went, mom, I'm not asking you to eat it. I'm asking you to scoop it. You wanna help me out here? I couldn't get into the freezer, you know, it's up high. I remember, I remember my mom looked at me, she said, honey, you can't have ice cream for breakfast. And I was like, why not? She was like, cause you need to start your day with something nutritious. Like how about a bowl of Apple Jacks? <laughs> That's bad 80s logic. It's a bowl of sugar either way. Because when you're six, you want the cereal, but by the time you're eight, you're a connoisseur. What you really want is that sugar milk from the bottom of the bowl. That's Jack Daniels for an eight-year-old. You're doing shots before the school bus, like mother loving sugar milk, take away the pain. Sugar milk. Right? <laughs> so I was like, please, mom, can I have ice cream for breakfast? She was like, honey, I'm the adult, you're the child. If you want to have ice cream for breakfast, you're gonna to have to wait until you're a grown up. And I was like, oh, I will. Every day. 
and then I forgot about it <laughs> for like 30 years. And that's when God, okay, this is what happened. I was out on the road. I didn't have any food in my apartment. Like I was working for a couple weeks. I come home, I go to sleep, I work at the con, I come back. Next morning I wake up starved. There's no food in my apartment. But that doesn't stop me from looking in places where I know it's not, right? Like I opened up the drawer where it's just like Chinese food takeout menus and batting cage tokens. I opened up the oven, like somebody put a turkey in there like in a cartoon, like boo whoop. I was like, nothing. Then I opened the freezer. Now I don't buy anything frozen, but I opened the freezer and there was a brand new pint of delicious ice cream in there. And I remember going, how did that get there? I think maybe it was my guardian angel or something because it was brand new. There was no spoon scars or nothing. It was a brand new pint of ice cream that I didn't put in there. And I put it back because I remember thinking, well, you can't have ice cream for breakfast. And I turned around and I went, or can I? It's about to go down. I take out the ice cream. It's eight in the morning. Joy is going through my body. I take out my phone and I hit Pandora. That's a random radio station. Hall and Oates is rich girl comes on at that second. You might not believe in God, but that's all the evidence I need. I'm eating ice cream and I can interview. You can rely on the old man's money. I was like, I'll give up tomorrow. Cause right now life is perfect. It is. <laughs> so this is what I want you guys to do on your way home tonight. If you haven't been to the grocery store, if you haven't been down the ice cream aisle since you were a kid, <laughs> they have made some changes. <laughs> they have flavors of ice cream now that Willy Wonka himself couldn't fathom. I think it's the only industry hiring the right people. Like I think somewhere there's just a room full of fat guys coming up with flavors like, hear me out, hear me out, close your eyes, see if you can taste it. What if we take the birthday cake and put it right into the ice cream and they're like, Larry, you're a genius. You're like, <laughs> like, you know something's delicious when you can just taste it. Like you read it and you go, this is what I want. <laughs> go down the frozen food section, go down that ice cream aisle and find something. We're like, this has caramel and pretzels. <laughs> this is what I'm gonna get. <laughs> now hear me out, only get the little pint. Don't get the half gallon. Because I've been over empty half gallons of ice cream. Like they are dead bodies, empty. Like, what have I done? <laughs> I'm a good person. <laughs> I have to get rid of this evidence. <laughs> but if you just get a pint of ice cream, that's like a big scoop when you know the kid at the store and he's just like, you're a good guy. It's like a big scoop. Okay. <laughs> now, fair warning. The car ride home tonight is gonna to be near impossible. If there's a flavor of ice cream you haven't tried and it's sitting right there, you need the discipline of a warrior. <laughs> you need to take that ice cream, you go home, you put it in the freezer, out of sight, out of mind, okay? Now what I want you to do is set your alarm for about 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, <laughs> hear me out. Because when your phone is going off at 5 a.m., you're gonna be like, is the house on fire? Are the Russians attacking? And then you go, oh, I have ice cream in the freezer and you'll pop up like a Navy SEAL. Go to the freezer, eat the ice cream, then go back to sleep. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're starting your day with ice cream and a nap. Life is about attainable goals. Good night, God bless you guys. Hey buddies, this is Steve Simone. Thank you so much for watching my special. I hope you had some laughs and if you don't have to tip, but if, if you want to, you totally can because the money goes to me and I could buy cool stuff with it. So thank you, but I just hope you laughed.